All right, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If you could find your seats, we'll be starting here momentarily. If you can find your seats, we'll get started. Okay. Wow. Well, welcome to RAMP's 32nd Annual Changing Attitudes and Breaking Barriers Luncheon. On behalf of RAMP and the Board of Directors, we appreciate each and every one of you for being here today. I am Steve Summers, and you may recognize some of this voice from 95.3 The Bull or Rockford's Greatest Hits 100.5. I thought I was battling some kind of a sinus thing. Maybe it's allergies. I'm not sure, but it's whatever it is, it's much better today than it was earlier in the week. To be safe, I brought my own condom right here. So we're set. And if you're one of the speakers coming up here today, and if you see this, just wave me. I'll come and grab it and move it off myself, all right? Just to be safe. Practice safe radio. That's what I always say. And we have a great lineup of speakers and awards for you. Some wonderful food as well, catered by one of our favorite locals, Green Fire. And let's not forget those yummy donuts on your tables, if you haven't had them already, from Edward's Orchard. Poplar Grove for dessert. Some of you had them already for your dinner, which is fine. Please dig in. Don't wait. Keep bidding on those auction items as well. The auction will close at 1225. And if you need assistance with bidding and who doesn't, see one of the auction assistants over by the auction tables and they'll help you out. And we're going to get things started this afternoon with RAMP's board president, Arliss Hendershot Love. Let's bring her up, everybody. In my day, it was called a windsack, but. <laughs> and I'm not going to say how far back Steve and I go. I think our mutual hair color kind of gives that one away. But I'm looking out at this audience, and all I can say is, wow. I can remember back in the day when, oh, maybe we had 100 people at the ramp fall lunch, and this is just absolutely amazing. As Steve said, I'm board president, and I'm both humbled and honored to be here in that capacity. And I'm here to introduce a number of people who work behind the scenes. First, let me introduce the Finance Committee who, members who are here today. And the Finance Committee is fairly large, but I believe there's only one member today here today, Dave Hormuth from the YWCA. Dave, are you here? If you could stand, please, Dave. Dave was part of the ramp staff until the YW stole him away, but Dave is instrumental in making sure that we have the funds required to provide the services that we need. When the Federal Rehabilitation Act added Centers for Independent Living, it required that 51% or more of the organization's governing board be individuals with disabilities to ensure them not becoming a social service agency, telling people what they should be doing in life. Think about that. Telling people with disabilities, being told from people without disabilities what they should be doing. It's kind of ironic. Many members of the board, like myself, have what I call an invisible disability. Trust me, they're very real. In the case of RAMP's board, it helps us keep our focus and our perspective. It also leads to some very healthy discussions, and it definitely helps us keep our head in the game and keeps us right on track. I'd like to introduce the board members present today, starting with the executive committee, Alan Zeiss, who is the past president from NYREACH. Alan, are you here? When Alan called me a couple of years ago and asked me to serve on the executive committee, I told him no. But as many people know, you don't say no to Alan. And I think it was after the fourth time I finally said yes and signed on as his VP. Craig Fetty is our treasurer with Compass Financial. Craig got that conversation from me last year when we needed him to continue in the role as treasurer. Craig, could you please stand? Thank you. 
Lafacaria Vaughn is fairly new to the RAMP board, but she did not hesitate to step up as vice president to the executive committee, and she's with the Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office. Lafacaria, are you here today? And J.J. Went is our secretary, and he's with Lutheran Social Services. J.J., can you give us a wave, please? Other board members include Jaria Kudrup with Awaken Foundation. And if you don't know, Sunny's up at Edgebrook Mall is part of Awaken. And if you like shrimp and grits, let me tell you, she makes the best. Nikki Lynch with the Rockford Park District. Nikki, are you here? <laughs> Joe Marshall is retired from Landstar. Joe, could you please stand? Joe and I were just joking that we're both the old guard on the, on the board. Laura McAndrew from, from Van Mater Health South. Laura, I just saw you. <laughs> Jessica Klotz, Kim Schweitzer, and Jody Schroeder couldn't be here today. Ramp staff is here in force. We would like to recognize you by asking you to stand or raise your hand. And believe me, this is... Next to the staff I work with at my paying job, this staff is one of the most dedicated I've ever had the pleasure to work with. Ramp staff, could you please raise your hand or stand? <laughs> now, as board president, I get to take a little teeny bit of uh, poetic license, as I like to call it, every once in a while. So there's two people I need to introduce. The first, many of you know, he's helped me from turning the commas in my life into periods. He keeps me going, literally takes my car keys when I need some downtime, which I hate to admit I need. Currently, he's helping me adapt to uh, things I need to adapt to from the impact of a series of numerous concussions and Trust me, nothing can compare you for that. He's my better half. And uh, even though we use different last names, believe me, we're very married. Joe Love, would you please stand? He's going to kill me for introducing him. I'm lucky enough that my volunteer work at RAMP has a direct tie with my real paying job. For those who don't know, Jim Hamilton, Milestone's founder, was approached by a group of people who asked if he could form an organization to help people with physical disabilities. And that's how RAMP was started. In fact, if you look at RAMP's mission statement and Milestone's mission statement, the first two sentences are exactly the same. Jim oversaw the start of the organization, start, hired the first CEO, and in fact, Milestone's HR director handled Ramp's HR for the first couple of years, and our CFO handled Ramp's books for the first several years. And Jim, like the father he could be, oversaw it as an advisor. So I'm very, personally, very proud to be the board president of Ramp and working at Milestone. We currently have a new CEO, and he knows every bit of milestone because he's worked there for 33 years. Our new CEO is Bill Gron, and if I could ask him to stand. <laughs> Bill also deserves extra credit because he was actually at scout camp at Camp Loudon and came back today to be at the, at the lunch, so he's really gone the extra mile. We depend on lawmakers to do what we do, to make the difference, to help us with the advocation work that we do. Because believe it or not, a phrase as simple as reasonable accommodation does not get understood. Oh, I put your office on the first floor. That's a reasonable accommodation. Eh, well, wait a minute, I gotta use steps to get into the building. Oh, we'll take a light bulb out. That will help with your vision problems. Nuh -uh, that's not reasonable accommodation. 
Well, you don't need a ramp cut in a curb. You can just enter around the alley. No, 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 no. That's not reasonable accommodation. So I'd like to introduce the lawmakers and elected officials who are here today who help us with our mission every single day. Rockford Park District Commissioner Tyler Smith is with us today. Tyler, could you please stand? And I believe Jay Sandine is here today because I just spoke to Jay. Jay, could you stand? Jay is a huge advocate of making parks accessible. And for those who don't know, we have a new, totally accessible park in town, Oxford Park, at Fulton and Oxford in honor of John Beck, who was a member of the RAMP staff and a member of the Rockford Park District staff. City of, Rock, or City of Freeport Mayor Jody Miller is here. Jody, could you please stand? State Representative Maurice West was called out of town at a meeting, but his staff is here. In fact, I believe his Chief of Staff, Jeremy, is here. Could you please stand? And Rockford Alderman Frank Beach is here, a longtime supporter of ours. Frank, could you please stand or let us know where you are? And it is now my pleasure to welcome the mayor of Rockford, Tom McNamara, to the podium. And Tom is very instrumental in helping us get our work done to make sure that accommodations are made. I think Eric Brown has him on speed dial. And just a little bit of tidbit that I don't even think Tom knows, but in Hamilton, you've all heard the line, I was in the room, or were you in the room when it happened? Well, I happened to be in the room with Tom's dad, John, when his dad got the call that he was being born. So I'm one of the few people that can say that. We were getting ready for a debate at the station. So Tom, I was in that room. <laughs> so thank you for everything you do for RAMP. I think we're all just fortunate that our list just saved us uh, from not telling you all the four-letter words my dad probably said when he found out his sixth child was born. Um, uh, okay, he just ran. Uh, but really an honor to be here today uh, with all of you to celebrate an amazing organization that makes a far-reaching impact in our community. You think about this, uh, one in four individuals has a disability. Uh, they represent the largest minority uh, group in America. And RAMP works to build an inclusive uh, space that encourages individuals to reach their full potential. And I would add to help us at the city of Rockford to reach our full potential. And Eric definitely has me on speed dial. Uh, this work obviously is not easy, uh, but it is truly making a difference in the lives of individuals and families, and again here as just the city of Rockford. At the city, we are continuing our efforts to be inclusive and accessible with eliminating barriers facing our disability community. In fact, we have an ADA transition plan at the city of Rockford, something that uh, less than 20% of communities have adopted across the country. It serves as our guide to help meet the city's goals in making all spaces within our public right of way accessible to all users. Through the complete streets policy and the adopted comprehensive plan, the city recognizes the need to develop multimodal transportation network that balances the needs and the desires and allows access for all types of travel, as well as provide health and well-being for people of all ages and of all abilities. This plan, along with areas of, of immediate danger to the public, the direct input from citizens and from persons with disabilities is really important and actually gets our highest priority at the City of Rockford. In addition to our current improvements with the new passage of the federal proposed right of way uh, pedestrian or the right of way accessibility guidelines, the city of Rockford uh, is proposing accessible pedestrian signals for all of our new signal projects. Accessible signals, if you're not familiar with them, are the beeping pedestrian buttons that help our visually impaired uh, pedestrians across our, across our roadways. So everyone moving forward will have that accessible function. 
This year, we also launched a capital match program in, in seven different of our tax increment financing districts. And this is really important. When we've launched these programs, this is a fa facade improvement program. But when we, when we launched this program, Eric, who may have me on speed dial, said, we've done this before. Uh, we know many of our businesses struggle with making ADA improvements. Why aren't you including ADA improvements? We said, Eric, hell of an idea, uh, something we should have thought of, and we listened to RAMP. And so RAMP's direct advocacy now has provided funding for numerous businesses to get up to a $25,000 match uh, to make ADA uh, transitions inside their business, uh, getting that 50-50 match. So they put in 25,000, we provide them 25,000 to reach those ADA goals. Last thing I wanna mention is, uh, I believe our fi Family Peace Center is a shining example of the commitment that we are making to services uh, and accessibility. And before we even opened the doors at the Family Peace Center, we had representatives of RAMP walk through and provide us input and guidelines so that we could transition and make the changes needed in that facility. I would just say, and this is not my job today, but I know that uh, as I sat down, I saw envelopes at my table. Uh, I think it's amazing that so many people are here, as Arla said, to see this grow from barely getting 100 to now a packed house here. Uh, I would just say they make an incredible, RAMP makes an incredible impact in individuals' lives. They make a significant impact in the families of our community, but they're also making a huge impact throughout the entire city. And I would just urge you to consider, no matter how big or small that gift is, to consider making an additional gift while you're here today to support the amazing staff, fantastic board members who volunteer their time uh, to make that impact in those individuals or families in our city. Again, thank you for letting me be here. And Steve, I didn't put anything on here. And to prove, I think I have you on speed dial as well, Tom. So I think every, I even have Jody Miller. So hey, we're, I'm two for one here. All right, so thanks for coming again. We're going to have lunch now with Green Fire. And then a reminder that the silent auction will close at 1225. If you like the mums on your table, you can take those home. Please look at the instructions and take one of those home. If you like the mums here on the stage, the big mamas, I call them, these big mamas could go home with you as well. I'll tell you how you can grab these right after lunch. So bon appetit. Again, the silent auction table closes at 1225. Lunch is served. <laughs>